My Zenbo is home, or is about to be home. We're heading over to Heathrow to go pick up the Schmimobile that has flown back from the United States. Now, it's a pretty crazy day. We've got a lot going on. Hi, guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, and welcome back to the channel, where later on, I've got a crazy idea to do with the cars and the lifts. Let's see how this evolves, but we need to tidy up quite a few things. We've got effectively the daily corner going on over here at the moment. The cars that have been out driving in pretty horrible weather recently. Talking of which, outside right now is a disaster. Hence, Turbo Transport is going to be joining us to transport the Zenbo back here later on when we're going to start shuffling things around, getting up to all sorts. But we've got a full garage of the cars that are here. Well, we will do when the Zenbo is here, one other one is here and we've sorted some things out. The fun thing is that the GT Black Series has been in the US and back over. The GT500 started in the US and came over, and then a few years ago, the Ford GT had done the same, but the Zembo's been out for a few months. In that time, I've driven around Beverly Hills, took part in Fuel Run up to Monterey Car Week, enjoyed the chaos of Car Week, then came back over for Cars and Copters, took it to Las Vegas for SEMA Week, then drove with James the Stradman up to his place in Utah, before finally visiting Velocity Invitational before flying it back a crazy couple of months, drove around 2,000 miles in total in the couple of states we went to over on the West Coast, but it's time to get it back home, away from the sunshine, to the misery and gloom of England. A funny thing is that in the meantime, I've taken delivery of the 296 GTS. The Mackie -E GT arrived, which actually came after the Abarth, which arrived and departed in the time the Zembo's been gone. And of course, most recently also, the Pura Sangue arrived. So there are a few new Schmimobiles. We have, however, said goodbye to the Lamborghini Huracan STO. We've had a departure, but hey, STO departed, 296 Pura Sangue and some other stuff has arrived and some more things are coming. It's not all bad, I'm certainly not complaining. A few other barn updates. I still need to tidy away the remainder of this. Obviously, we now have our incredible Dura workshop over there around the daily base spaces, which wasn't here when the Zembo was last here. There have been a few other things changing, but one of the biggest things that started the transformation of this place was installing the Benpack Auto Stacker lifts. This run of seven lifts, I absolutely love the way they look, and I've shuffled them around a bit over time as to what goes where, but I've always wondered about doing something, and you notice that I have some very colorful cars, pretty much every color. We've got the violets, indigos, blues, we've got the greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. We have everything. So I kind of want to line them up in a color-based order and pop them up on the stackers. So that's my idea for later on and to see exactly how that's gonna look. But before that, we need the likes of the Zenbo back. The bright pink van is of course outside. You might be wondering why the Mackie -E GT is tucked in here at the end at the moment. That's just plugged into a regular three pin to charge it while we've got the SeaTech charger off the wall until we reinstall it. We need to get an electrician in to do that. But by this being here, plugging in on the mains with a big battery like this, it does take about two and a half days to fully charge it from empty. So you want to top it up all the time. So it's sitting there plugged in. This will mean a lot of logistics. Obviously we also have Brad's car, the Jag and the TVR, which aren't mine that are in here at the moment. And I think today, probably given the weather, given that it's parked right there, we're going to be heading out in the Focus RS, which still actually doesn't have that many miles. In fact, the Mustang Dark Horse, which I've owned at this point for about a month and a half, has nearly as many miles on it as my five-year-old Focus RS does. But hey, different cars, different purposes, different things going on. It's also very cold, as you can probably tell. So let's get ourselves ready for the RS and the journey to Heathrow. I interrupt the video with an announcement. Things are about to go very wrong. Bear with me, this is not going to be as smooth as I thought it should have been. However, if you want to save things from going wrong when you're looking to buy a new car, that's where the sponsor of today's video steps in, Car Vertical. I always run a Car Vertical check whenever I'm buying a new Schmimobile to save myself time and money, to save myself from going to view or perhaps to buy a car without knowing the full story. Car Vertical are connected to all sorts of different government registries and insurance databases in many different countries to know more about the history of the car that you're considering. For example, any outstanding finance, any peculiarities with the mileage if it's had a rollback or any accident damage that perhaps might not be declared.
Now, having recently sold my Lamborghini Huracan STO, it's certainly on my mind to consider another Lambo for the collection. And one I've spoken about a few times is a Gallardo, very much where the Schmi 150 channel began filming Gallardo's LP560s. But take a look at this Gallardo Spider. If that was back on the road, I'd want to know about it. Involved in some fire damage, an absolute state, you need to know these kind of things. Another LP560 Spider that's had a pretty nasty shunt. Again, that could be repaired, it could be looking completely fine, but you'd want to know that's been in the history and being connected to different auction sites from accident damage companies means that they have all of this information and data to be able to, again, save you time and money when you're going to look. Make sure to use my code SHME150 for 10% off when you're running a check. Like I say, I always do when I'm considering something new, but let's get back to the story. And um, yeah, what's going wrong with this one? Exactly as expected, the weather today is nasty, but look who's here. None other than Mr. Turbo Transport, obviously on the way to join us to collect the Zenvo in his ram deer. He's actually got antlers on the ram over there with his crazy livery on the trailer of which many Schmimobiles have now been transported. I tell you what, the roads are actually pretty busy. He did a nice job of moving lanes there because uh, I'm gonna have to squeeze out a little bit to somehow make this work. But um, yeah, not the longest of drives, not the most exciting of drives either as we sit in the traffic of the M25 in the doom and gloom of this weather. But you can very quickly see exactly why the Zenvo is being transported home, not driven, because this is precisely <laughs> where you don't want to drive it, especially after all of the fun out in California, to now immediately be here. However, it is going to be a little bit filthy. It's going to need a clean up. It's been out at airfields and things. Goodness knows what weather conditions. So we've got a plan for that when we get back and a plan for some other things as well. So I think this is just basically a case of cruising at truck and trailer speed to make our way round towards the cargo warehouse. In fact, to the exact same place where I actually dropped it off a couple of months ago, which is crazy. But my goodness, this video is gonna take quite the turn. There's a whole lot of things that have happened that weren't really planned. So bear with me a little bit here. This is where we're going, Heathrow. We've got terminal four and cargo. That's gonna be our exit in just a moment was round to the cargo terminal. I think it's been about six months since I was last here, but on the right hand side, this is where we're coming. Of course, I'm not allowed to bring you along inside. I have to show my passport, a bunch of different documents and stuff like that. But I think somewhere in that back lot or inside is one Zenvo waiting to be collected. And obviously Tony will be here in a moment as well. And I think I just spotted a Maybach. Must be an executive area around here as well. But let me get parked up. And then, I'm not gonna lie, I'm quite excited about this. Obviously haven't seen the car for a couple of weeks. But in theory, it's gonna be here, ready to go get loaded into the truck, hopefully. Fingers crossed this all goes to plan. Nice and easily does it. Oh, there we go, my back, coming past. Very nice. I guess we're near Heathrow, should not be overly surprised good way to travel that good way to travel right let's go in well this is all gone spectacularly wrong we've been here for about an hour and a half we have no car i mean the car is here i've been in i've been with the car there's actually a problem with the car which continues from something you might have picked up on from when we were in america but there's another new problem which is that somewhere along the way somewhere through this process the key has got lost which is such a minor thing. There's always a system with air freight and freight of a car that the key goes in a pouch which goes on the windscreen. It's not here. It's not on the CCTV from when the car arrived here. So there is a Zembo key out there somewhere which hopefully one day I'll get back. In the meantime, it means we need to go home, which thankfully isn't too far away, and back with the spare. And I should have brought the spare, but obviously we're here with the trailer. We've driven all the way here. We've wasted an hour and a half already looking for it, searching for it, dealing with all of that. But somewhere along the way, a handler somewhere has taken the key off and not put it back, which shouldn't happen in this kind of thing. Um, obviously the Zembo guys are gonna be super helpful. We're trying to get this sorted out ASAP and reprogramming new cars. It's actually going, I'm gonna tell you more about this later, but it's actually going straight to Denmark. So that's not gonna be too big a problem. But in the meantime, this is an absolute hassle. I'm still wearing my high vis because you have to wear a high vis to go into the warehouse. We are under the flight path with planes going overhead every few seconds. But I guess 
for the next couple of hours. Tony will chill somewhere with the trailer. We'll hop in the Focus. We'll go home and get the spare key and we'll come back and try this all again. And then I'll tell you what's actually wrong with the car. But this is a complete like pain because we've got guys waiting at the barn to get the car cleaned when it gets back there because there's something else I need to do. We've got Tony's time, my time, everyone else's time. And now we've got a key that we've got to replace as well. Not particularly happy about this, not particularly happy about this at all. But right now there's not a whole lot I can do other than go and get the spare key and take it from there. I think one of the most annoying parts of this is that we're basically gonna have to sit in traffic in both directions just to go and rectify this problem. Smart motorway peculiarity here, slows down to 50 miles per hour, but then at the next gantry becomes a 70 again. It's 50 just from there to the next one. That is odd. That is really, 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 really odd. Anyway, like I said, the big problem here is we don't actually know who's messed this up yet. They've checked the CCTV here and the car didn't arrive with it on the windscreen. Obviously, the car has had a bit of a travel schedule from the warehouse where I dropped it to uh, then be transported across to JFK. It actually flew from New York JFK to Liège uh, and then it's been uh, transported in a truck from Liège here to Heathrow. So there are various different stages that it could have gone wrong. It's just one of those like really stupid mess ups that now causes a massive headache with everything that's involved with all the different people and stages. And I know I'm actually super lucky that it's this way around because I've got the spare key. Imagine if this was at the other end of this journey in the US and I had landed and the key wasn't there. What on earth would I do? That would be a complete like, well, we're a bit stuck, completely stuck car would just be sitting at the freight terminal it's also drying up a little bit which is nice um, but this is not what I planned because I've got a lot of work to do this afternoon and we're now going to be about in total this is going to be about four hours behind where we should be which is really just uh, so silly so silly that it's just the key how did they mess this up I have no idea how like how why mission success we now have the additional key this was the presentation box that Zembo had made for my car originally. That key has obviously lived safely in there basically ever since. I will now be taking that with me. Uh, no, I'm just gonna take this whole thing with me. That'll be even safer. We also are gonna take this, which will become even clearer as to why later on. I'm also gonna take the SeaTac CS3 because I just realized that the car hasn't been started for a long time and there's a small chance that we might have battery issues. Anyway, it should be okay. We'll see. I'm gonna take that, grab that, grab the key, Let's do this again, round two. We are back again. Feels like deja vu. The bad news though, is having just driven this way, there's a lot of traffic going the other way. Hey look, there comes Mr. Turbo Transport again. Um, yeah, there's a lot of traffic, so it's gonna take far longer than I would like to get back again, which is no fun. But we'll go in, at least I've got the spare key. At least we're gonna be able to approach the other problems that we need to figure out and then um, take it from there. Narrow parking space this, and um, at least get the Zembo home. It is good to have this thing back here, even if it's raining, even if it's been stressful, but I tell you what, the other problem, the other problem, and of course I'm not allowed to film in the warehouse, all sorts of customs and things going on, but I did need to take the tyre inflator with me and this tyre, which we knew was low, we'd seen it, and we think has a slow puncture, was down to 7 PSI, where all the others are at 27. So yeah, I've got a flat tyre I need to sort out. That's going to be on the, uh, on the cards to deal with at some point in the very near future. Um, but otherwise unscathed, just the absence of one key. So what we're going to be doing right now is popping this straight in the trailer, getting it back to base, getting it clean, because obviously with transport like this, there are smudges, fingerprints, a thin layer of dust over the whole thing. But it's, it's running well, no flat battery, obviously no fuel. We're literally down to the very bottom of the fuel gauge. I'm probably going to leave it that way because we have had some peculiarities with the fuel gauge. It's just one of those things and it might need emptying, so I don't want to fill it up. So I think we stick this straight in, straight in the trailer now, and then get it back to base, bring the Zembo back home. Ready to load, Tony? Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Let's get it straight on in. 
That was one of the smoothest loads we've ever done with this car, well, with any car into a trailer. Um, I'm gonna be trusting Tony with the key. <laughs> Always. I'm gonna look after this. <laughs> right, windows up, see you in a sec. <laughs> one Zenvo fully loaded, um, one truck coming around the corner, so we best get out of the way. And then, uh, yeah, we'll kind of dash, jump in the Focus, and make our journey onwards back to the barn. Better late than never. <laughs> What a day. <laughs> Back at the Schmuseum, the Ford GT is getting a wash, a tidy up, a clean up. This needs a bit of explaining. So I suppose I should probably show you why Hart's Car Spa are here cleaning this car right now. One more thing though. We have some news on the whereabouts of the Zenvo Key. And oh my goodness, we'll get to that in a moment. Let me explain the Ford GT, then the missing key and then we'll go from there. I guess it's time to explain what's going on here. An unfamiliar surrounding, two Ford GTs behind me because we're here at M Sport in the north of England, home to the World Rally Championship team and with a racetrack outside. So we have brought my car up to go out for a couple of laps. Also alongside is the Bumblebee original press car from Ford of Europe. I have seen that many times over the years. There are some other very nice things around, but I'm about to hop into this. The Ford Puma Rally 1 that is run by the M Sport Ford World Rally team in the WRC current spec. And I'm going to experience this for a moment out there before it's going to be time to hop into that. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. What you're listening to then is the sound of the hybrid Puma Rally 1. We have a 1.6 litre four cylinder with a 100 kilowatt electric motor. Look at the wing on the back of this, the latest livery of the WRC car. And then here, ready to go out into the cold and the wet. It is genuinely freezing today, but hey, this is going to be right at home. And it's about to be epic as I'm cozied into here alongside my driver, David. Check this out. Check this out. Right, let's go. From an experience with a whole lot of grip, an impressive amount to be honest, considering what it's like out there, to one that's going to be a little bit interesting in comparison. But I tell you what, having driven this car at Silverstone, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, Nürburgring GP, Hockenheim, Road Atlanta, and a whole load of circuits in the United States as well, I think it's time to, uh, yeah, to get ready and um, go give it a go and see where it takes us. <laughs> It's time to give this a go. So, slow and steady does it. I think slow and steady is gonna be the nature of the game right now. Quicksilver exhaust. God, that sounds amazing in here. All right, when I get the go ahead, it'll be time to pull out. Out we go then. So let's see what the grip is like here. I'm in sport mode on the GT at the moment. Let's go manual and just be conscious of what this place is like. <laughs> You've got some interesting corners. It's actually open as kind of a conference and events venue hire, doing more and more of that as well. I've been up here for something I can't tell you a whole lot about. We have very cold tires, obviously, at this point in time. I can bring up different displays, gauges, tire pressures, maybe keep an eye on those. Channels of water running across. Let's have some fun, ease into it for a few minutes, 
and get comfortable with what's going on here and how this works. One of the things I've always loved about the Ford GT is actually the predictability of its oversteer. When you kick out the back of this thing, it's super predictable. Okay, that was my first little go. I mean, I'm sure if I just get a little bit more playful with kicking the back, yeah, it very much wants to go. It very, very much wants to go. And I'm sure there are better cars to practice in wet conditions with than a, uh, what, near on million dollar Ford GT, which we do not want to stuff today. So um, just enjoy this, have some fun. <laughs> What was I saying? <laughs> Should probably um, just enjoy, be sensible, ease into it. the car needed a wash. We brought it up here. It's been a whole lot of fun just to bring it to M Sport, the Ford Connection. <laughs> oh, and on that one, let's head back in. In behind the WRC. <laughs> oh, that was great fun. That was great fun. Driving this car here at M Sport. Just like ticking it off the amazing places to visit list. Sitting behind the Puma Rally 1 WRC. <laughs> Good times. As collections of Fords go, we need to take a look around. One GT is cool, two GTs is very cool, five is even cooler, but come with me here at M Sport because this is fairly mind blowing. Bumblebee, of course, just here at the moment, but I want to bring you to what's over this way. Of course, with M Sport running the WRC cars and the Rally 2 cars, hence the line of Fiestas here, these are all ready and prepped to head on out. What's quite fun is seeing all of the plates. This is actually an early 2000s Colin McRae Focus WRC. To know that the great legend himself drove that. We've then got a Mark II Focus RS. Obviously, I have a lot of love for the Ford Focus RSs. 2009 WRC. Carbon Series 4 GT comes up next, the Carbon Series with the carbon fiber stripes. I love this thing, Total Sleeper. They use these to scope out and go and drive the rally courses to get a feel for what's ahead. This doesn't look like anything from the outside apart from obviously lifted suspension, but inside, bucket seats, cage, completely stripped out and prepped. We've then got the support truck before we have the full liquid carbon GT, one of only 30 in the world. Always amazing to see those, the full carbon fiber body, but come over this way. Fiesta R5, which came before Rally 2. We've got the 2011 WRC. We've then got the S2000 Fiesta. This is interesting. One of only 11 RS 1700T. This was the very final prototype that they made back in 1980. Something I had to learn a little bit about. We've then got the Sierra Cosworth RS 500. Obviously very special car. Stuart Ford F1. Ford are obviously about to come back to F1 with Oracle Red Bull Racing. This is from uh, the late 90s, so similar to the car that I actually have at home, but interesting to take a look at. Obviously, a big part of the history. And lastly, a very famous one, the Escort Cosworth, to finish off this room. My mind is blown. That was pretty good fun. Now, as you know, we have the bright pink van at the Sch Museum, which is, of course, from MSRT, which is M Sport Road Technology. So to have come up here to MSRT, we've actually driven up with the van itself to now experience the GT, see that again, and see lots of other lovely goodies while we're here as well, has made for a pretty good day. But I tell you what, probably time that we magic ourselves back home to base with the GT and get cracking on. Now that we're back at base, we need to get this unloaded and ready to get it cleaned and tidied. And then I need to explain everything because 
Oh, this is a story and a half. This has been a long old day. It's been a long old journey, but let's get this unloaded, get this cleaned up, get it inside and figure things out. <laughs> It might be pretty dark out here, but a layer of dust combined with some water drops, and you can see why this needs a proper cleanup. So um, thanks to the guys for braving the uh, evening to get this clean and tidy. Bit of snow foam over it. It's actually kind of cool, that view, with the lights behind. But um, yeah, winter time, hey? Early nightfall, and a particularly dark night right now. But um, this will be clean, tidy, and looking much better soon. Well, would you look at that? The Lila Perlamore paint is looking amazing. And also to have the Zenvo here in the corner with all of the new Jura cabinets and furniture that we have. This is absolutely spot on. So you can see we've got a few things out. Need to make sure we're on top of the game with popping those away. We've also got the floor cleaner over there as well because, well, Brad's been making a start, but there is a lot that needs to be done. But this is so cool to have it back home. It's only gonna be brief, as I mentioned, but with the Zenvo inside, and with a lot of cars in fairly random positions like the Amira and the Transit Custom MSRT just here, there are a couple still outside that we need to pull in to make it the full garage. And it's not gonna be clean and tidy and organized, but it will be what we can do with it right now. It is dark and miserable out there, but we'll pull in the Mustang Mach-E. This garage is gonna be color overload. I mean, it's always color overload, which is exactly how I love it. The red and white curbs just adding to that. Um, obviously, these are basically the daily spaces. I know the Zenvo is not exactly daily. I'll explain why it's staying there in a moment. But um, yeah, one in, one down, perfect, looking nice. And with a little bit more noise to it, the Focus RS as well, to complete the bunch here in Europe. Cool. We have a full house. I still need to explain the key story, one second. But for the moment, we've got the three cars here. Well, four if you include the TVR. We've then got the four more there at the moment, eight. Then we've got all of the lifts, which would be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Then we've got the Pura Sangue in the van and behind the F1, which is 22 cars. And we've got a fair amount of space left, which is really cool. Because obviously, okay, yes, you don't want the van part there full time, but there are three lifts that aren't doubled up at the moment. There is room here for another two or so. Um, and obviously there's one blocking the entrance, which there wouldn't be. So we would have three more spaces and there are a couple of cars here that aren't mine. And normally we've got daily cars in here as well. So there's a lot of space, which is amazing. And having the Zembo back means, I say full house, obviously the Mustang Dark Horse is in California. I'm not gonna include that because that's never gonna come here, or at least I have no plans for it to come here. It would be kind of crazy if it did with a US plate on it. So let's talk about the key and the news. The news is, connected to the multiple stages of the journey that this car had. The key has been found. The missing key has been found. It's not in the United Kingdom. The key was found in Liège, where the car had its stop point. So the key is now traveling here, along with a document that's actually needed. So that should have been here. Very minor thing, but for whatever reason, the key got taken out, didn't make it over. It's just super lucky that I had the spare here and was able to pick it up. Just a bit of a mess because, like I said, I did have another plan for today. It's already about 8 p.m. now, eight o'clock in the evening. My plan was to basically color coordinate a lot of stuff and spend some time shuffling cars around, which I'm sure some of you will be very pleased. I'm not wasting your time watching lots of shuffling around of cars, but I would have liked to have done it for the photos. Unfortunately, it's not gonna happen because I've got to get myself on the road very soon with the Pura Sangue, which doesn't give me a long time to get everything sorted out. And not only that, in addition, as I mentioned, other plans with this. So what's happening? Well, I said when I dropped it off in the US that after it comes back here, very quick turnaround, immediately being picked up right now to take it to Denmark. It's gonna to go to Denmark over the winter because basically service, check over of a lot of things, full nut and bolt check effectively because I've done 4,000 miles with it. This is a seriously bespoke hand-built hypercar, mega car. And with these kinds of things, whether it's a Koenigsegg, a Pagani, even a Bugatti, LaFerrari, P1, whatever it might be, it's thoroughly worth having them inspected if you drive them a lot, because the way parts are made and not exactly used by a great many number of cars means that you want to have it checked over. Of course, the car has done me amazingly well. When buying only the fourth TSRS and 14th Zembo chassis, I expected 
to need to work more closely with the brand than I actually have done in terms of things that happen. I've mentioned a couple of them. The fuel sender sometimes is a bit weird. The speed sensor needs to be looked at. There are one or two very minor things, just stuff that they're gonna go over, they're gonna check over, make sure everything's well at a time of year when basically I'm not gonna do anything with it. So for a simple oil change, they could actually come here and do it right here, which would be amazing. For lots of things they could come here, but in this particular case, with enough things to look at, it's worth sending it back to the full team so they can look at it. Maybe I'll go over as well to drive it again in Denmark. That would be pretty good fun. So that is the plan for it right now. Rather than having the car here, as much as I love having all of the cars here all of the time, not for right now, not for right now. So that's gonna be going back. Dark Horse is obviously staying in America, but uh, kind of crazy that it's back from its American adventure. It's been gone for four or five months, something like that. Drove a good 2000 miles or so in the United States, but now the Zembo is home, briefly. We had actually finished this video, but we've jumped ahead because I've got new information and I felt I should probably update you with the new news and what is actually happening and what the plan is next because there was even more to it than I realized at the time. Not only were we missing the key, but we were also missing the registration document. That's pretty important given this was supposed to be departing straight away for its journey to Denmark. However, we have tracked them down. We now know where they are. Both the key and the dock are in Liège, in Belgium. Now, this is where it gets kind of funny because I'm about to depart with the Pura Sangue to drive to Belgium, which means I'm only going to be around the corner from where they actually are. So I'm gonna go get those, get them back to the car myself so that the car can go to Denmark. Oh, okay. It's a very small problem at the end of the day, but it is quite funny, the logistics and everything that's involved. And it shouldn't have happened, but I tell you what, everyone has done a nice job of being in touch with every different stage to work it all out, to figure out where all of this was. So it's a thanks to the team at My Car Import, as always, for their help. They've handled the logistics of bringing it back. We've now just got to get to the cargo warehouse in Liège to go pick up the key, which I guess by the time this video is live, I've already done. What an absolute adventure. I would like to say thank you as well though to M Sport for the opportunity earlier to hop into the WRC Puma to go and experience that and to take my Ford GT out on their track as well, which is now pretty looking clean and tidy back here at the Schmuseum. But amazing to have the Zembo home. What a journey it was, what an amazing trip it was with this in the US, memories for a lifetime. And it's, it's absolutely priceless to, to experience that. It's amazing. So thank you to you guys for being part of it. And don't forget to check out Car Vertical. If you're thinking about buying a new car or if you're looking to find out a little bit more about your own and using my code TREAM150 with the link down below, more information in the description, you can save yourself some money on running the checks as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.